there are many things people could say, and certainly people who know far more about dance have said them more elegantly, but what I remember most was the extraordinary experience of being in a, in a theater, and somehow the dance reached out, and suddenly there was no stage and audience. We were all enveloped into this world that she created. It really remains one of the most extraordinary memories I have of ever being in a theater. And when I heard there was going to be a film about Pina, I hoped that some way this experience could be translated. And in fact, of course it has been, because Pina entrusted this film to a major artist, a major member of her artistic generation. It's such a pleasure to welcome back to the stage of Alice Tully Hall, Vim Vendors. Wow, it's something to be back here in New York. And I'm grateful to the New York Film Festival to have invited me with Pina so I can take you all away out of New York into the universe of Pina Bausch. This is a project that Pina and I dreamt about for more than 20 years. I had suggested it in the first place and that Pina had picked up on it and eventually became serious and said, Vim, let's do it. And that's when my trouble started. <laughs> because in spite of all my enthusiasm, I had never imagined how I would do it. We wanted to make this film together, sure. And then I sat down and started to imagine how, and then I got the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> because I really, seriously, realized I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know, didn't know how to film dance. And even looking at the history of dance films didn't help very much because I realized this invisible wall that I felt between Pina's work on stage and what I could put on screen, it had always existed. Between film and dance, something didn't work out. So I asked Pina to wait. And I told her honestly because there was no way not to tell her the truth that, <laughs> yes, I had. We could only do it once I knew how. And it became a running gag for over 15 years. She would see me, we would meet often, and she would ask me, do you know now? <laughs> and I would say, not yet, Pina. And eventually, she wouldn't even ask anymore. She just raised her eyebrows. And I would shrug my shoulders. <laughs> Which didn't hide the fact that we're I was very serious about it, and I, in all these years, would have dropped everything in order to make this film with Pina, but I really didn't know how. I felt my craft just didn't have the goods to film her work. And anything I imagined I could do with a camera just couldn't, didn't even come close. And then one day, in 2007, I saw my first digital 3D film, appropriately called U2 in 3D. That was, <laughs> that was the, my eureka moment. And I, it, I mean, it was really amazing. I, from the first frame on, I knew that was it. That was the language that I'd been waited for, waiting for, and that was the one tool that allowed me to no longer be outside looking in, but be with the dancers in their own kingdom in space. At the end of the screening, at the, Credits were still rolling, I called Pina and said, we can do it now. And then it took us two years. We worked on the concept, we selected the pieces that were gonna be the backbone of the film, and really were looking forward to doing this, and Pina never saw any 3D movie. I didn't want her to see anything that was out there because I figured she'd get scared. And uh, when we were finally ready to show her and to work, for one week with her and her dancers on her own stage so she'd understand my enthusiasm about the new medium and could see for herself and we could test all sorts of things with her dancers and she could watch it live. We were re the, our trucks were already loaded when we got that phone call in the production office in Berlin that the in unimaginable had happened. Pina had died the night before. And she really died from one 
day to another. Nobody was prepared. Our dancers have family or friends. It pulled the carpet from under all of them. And I canceled the film immediately. And uh, there was no use making it anymore. I mean, we had wanted to make it together for 20 years. And you wouldn't see a film tonight if it wasn't for the dancers. Even on the night of Pina, when they heard the news of Pina's death, they performed. They were on tour in Poland, in Krakow. They, they performed with tears in their eyes, but they performed and they decided to continue. And so two months later, they started to rehearse the pieces that Pina herself had chosen for often. And that's when it dawned on me, not making the film was wrong. And so from one day to another, we jump-started the film. We couldn't make a film with Pina anymore, but we could still make a film for Pina. Without much of a concept, because obviously the concept that we had was obsolete. I'm ha very happy that I had a producer on my side who understood that we still had to make the movie, even if it was a journey into the unknown. John Piero Ringel, come on, John. So, and the film we then made for Pina is what we're showing you tonight. And I'll be here afterwards to answer any questions, which is unlikely that the film leaves any questions of Thank you. Have a As I mentioned, we'll have a Q&A at the end. Uh, this is our first 3D movie in the main slate here at the New York Film Festival. We don't want it to be our last 3D movie, so please return the glasses <laughs> on your way out and turn off those cell phones. Thank you. talk about working with 3D. What surprised you about working with it? Or was there anything along the way where you learned you couldn't do something or the opposite, that you could do something you didn't expect? Well, all of the above. I mean, then I was so excited about this thing, 3D, when I first saw it and I intuitively thought it's a fantastic medium for dance and it's made for dance. And it'll bring out the best in dance, and maybe even dance will bring out the best in 3D. And then we started to test. I had about a year before we would start shooting, and the technology had everything that we needed in terms of space, because that was why I had picked it in the first place. But we started shooting, and like the Lumiere brothers, we went out. <laughs> into the street for the first time, and I was in Paris because my stereographer was in France. And we went out and shot outside in the street for the first time, and my assistant was running around in front of the camera in circles and made big arm movements. And then we went back in, and a few hours later, we had it all calculated so we could see it on a screen, and that was a disaster. <laughs> my assistant had, was a four-armed Indian goddess, and he had many legs. And we soon realized that the technology had a terrible flaw, it couldn't represent movement. And that was, of course, horrifying, because <laughs> in order to shoot dance and Pina's dance, I mean, it was impossible, I couldn't possibly show any of this to Pina. So we, we worked for a year on these flaws and sort of learned how to handle them and how to improve them. And, and it still, I mean, still today it's a difficulty with the technology because it's linked to the fact that it can only be screened at 20, 
projected at 24 frames. I mean, no theater in the world can show it any other way than 24 frames. And the response would be to shoot it at 50 frames or 48 frames, and we tested it, and it was fantastic. Everything was smooth as silk and beautiful movements, but we could not have showed it anywhere. Even, <laughs> even James Cameron, when he did Avatar, tried hard to be able to shoot it on 48 frames, but he either couldn't get around it. So, and, but we learned how to deal with the problem, and we, there were a few things we just couldn't do. You couldn't do lateral movements with the cameras. You could move forward and backward, but as soon as you made lateral moves, your stroboscoping was horrifying. And um, it's hard for me to imagine to go back, and even the expression going back shows that it's, I mean, once you've tasted it and, and you realize that there's so much more to do and it's really still an unexplored landscape, both in documentary field and in storytelling, it's not really, I mean, it's not really, nobody has really shown that you can tell a story with it so far. And Pina, of course, is a very special documentary because what we were filming in itself was fiction because in a way, <coughs> choreography is fiction. So, but still the attitude of the film, of course, is that of a documentary. But to go out somewhere into the world and shoot a classic documentary, so to speak, in 3D would be very, very tempting. I really actually want to do that. And I also really would like to tell a story in 3D. And we're working on both. And uh, it's not so easy. And to really find a story that needs it and not only needs it as an attraction, but needs it essentially because it couldn't be told any other way. That's a code that, a code that needs to be cracked. And I'm, I'm sure that hundreds of writers all over the world are working on, directors are working on this right now. And before we know it, there will be a lot of independent films also in 3D. Because I don't really count so much on the studios for really showing it, showing us the possibilities of 3D. I think they're quite happy that it isn't a great attraction, but they're really not into showing us what it can do except being an attraction. So I'm, I'm really certain that it's a great, it's a great step for cinema, not unlike going from silent to sound, and except not many big movies have shown us so far. And but there will be movies, and I think, I'm sure especially documentaries, I think it is the ideal technology and it's the ideal language for the documentary of the future, and you can take your audience in a whole different way into the lives of other people. It's much more immersive. And the big discovery for me when I did this film was not so much the space, which was the obvious, and I really thought that was it, but when we were shooting the film, the great discovery for me was when there was just a person in front of the camera. These portraits we did of the, of the dancers, it was the simplest shot because there was just a person sitting in front of the camera. For me, that was much more exciting than the huge crane shots and everything because that was mind-blowing, I felt. The presence of a person in front of the camera and out of a sudden, the body had volume, which was unheard of and was there in such a different way that I really thought this is the future of 3D is, of 3D is to take that seriously, to take that presence seriously. And I think that is ideal for documentaries more than anything else. Of course, you can tell stories this way, but we still haven't really seen how. So I'm looking forward to it, though. Time for a couple more. Yes, right.